All right, guys, I'm here with Mark Jones, and we're going to talk a little bit of football today. We just had the big draft, of course. It was a lot of fun, I thought, anyways. And, Absolutely, uh, for sure. And don't hang up on us, guys. It'll get more interesting, I promise. We're going to get good at this. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. So we're just going to roll over some of the picks. I mean, I always like to get the take from, you know, it's better than just on the chat. You know, you can you can get so much more when yeah. you're having a conversation. But, um yeah, I'm just going to flip over. It's too bad Mark can't see what I'm looking at on my computer right now. But um, I'm just going to be going through the league and stuff, and I'm going to maybe tell Mark what I'm doing, and maybe he can look at the same thing. Have you looked at the uh, the playlists from the YouTube channel yet, Mark? I saw several of the videos on the guys, and to be honest, I, I, use, I use quite a few of them. I did do some additional research on my own. Because everybody looks great on film. It's kind of like that highlight package the, the colleges get from the high schools. These guys are five times bigger than the rest of the rest of the players. They're dominating, running over, making crazy plays. So right. I, I enjoy the highlight films. They're, they're really good. But then when it comes time to make my decisions and kind of sort out, you know, which touchdown looks better, that's really hard to do. So I, I take a look at what skill level they played against and for sure. what their production was in big games and what coaches have said about them and, and try to get some player comparisons. I know everybody likes that big hyped guy who's like six, eight and runs a four, two and is jumping out of the gym, but that doesn't always translate. So, right. Yeah, look. no, that's for sure. You can get a little bit from video though. I like to just mainly what I do is just look for how the guy can make his cuts, you know, how quick he is, how athletic he is. You know what I yeah, mean? And sure. When it comes to quarterbacks, I look at, uh, accuracy and uh yeah, like right I, now i'm looking at your guy trevor lawrence i'm just rolling some videos so i was going to tell you if you went over to that youtube channel you'll find a playlist for your team in particular i i have all seven of your picks just on a playlist so nice. anyways i just thought i'd tell you that so maybe if you did want to look at the video at the same time you could see what i was looking at like right now i'm watching the trevor lawrence video and uh you know he it is what he is you know he's tall guy lanky he can run i'm pretty impressed with that good i didn't with the realize he was, yeah i didn't realize he was such a he could scramble like he does and he runs pretty fast for a tall guy i mean he, he takes off yeah he's he's mobile he reminds me a, a lot of aaron Rodgers early in his career in that in that mold as a player who's really active with his legs that you don't think about it because he's making plays with his arms yeah, yeah. And lots of times you think of those big running quarterbacks, and, and you're getting a few that are better at both ends. You know, Kyler Murray out there in Arizona, I'm sure we'll be talking about him in a few, in a few minutes, maybe not in necessarily the draft order, but the team that he represents. And so All you right. have a few of those guys out there, you know. But Well, Kyler is like the prototypical, um, you know, scrambler. But, I mean, these big guys like Justin Herbert, I think surprised a lot of people with his ability to just take off and run 20 yards. You know, these guys look for like, you know, they look for the openings where the safety's not there and then they just say, hey, I'm going for it. And, and they're not afraid to do it. And that's that's going to be valuable. Of course, it can get him hurt, too. For sure. Yeah. I mean, like Kyler Murray's good with the slide, but he's he's such a small guy. And that's my long term career concern. Right. For him is, is is how well he can take care of that body because it's a slot frame. and He makes such electric plays with his legs and he he's getting better. He, yeah, each, he can... each game, you know, he's. He'll have to Able avoid to the, the hits. Yeah, for sure. I mean, he was played banged up the last part of the season. He was having a MVP caliber season. Then he got a little banged up, and but really he played really well through that. It's just the the defense has changed a little bit, and he wasn't as active with his legs. And but he still had some great games. Like he was MVP candidate, and then after that they lost the game they played really well in. And then the offense just in general tanked for a couple of games. Everybody kind of forgot about him. But then he came back and had some. Some really nice games towards the end of the season. I think he's really going to help New Mexico out. They're, oh, they're yeah. going to be tough to beat, you know. Oh, no doubt about it, as long as he stays healthy. Now, he does have Taysom Hill as a backup, and that's not a bad idea. Do you know if Taysom's going to be starting this year? My general take on that is I think he's going to probably play that same sub-package role they always played with the potential to be a starter. I drafted Jameis Winston in a league like maybe two or three seasons ago now, and I thought he was going to be – the man. Right. And he never was <laughs> the man. But, you know, if you look at his statistics from the last full year, he plays, you know, 5,200 passing yards and all right. these TDs, but he makes all these bad decisions. Yeah, all these ball. interceptions to go along with those touchdowns. For sure, yeah. And it, it really hurt Tampa Bay's 
skilled position receivers that Tom Brady was there, ironically enough, that they went on and win the Super Bowl. But, like, you know, Chris Godwin and, and Evans and some of those guys just weren't seeing the volume because they weren't down by 20 and weren't having to throw the ball. And, you yeah. know, it was a more balanced attack. But uh, Yeah, Godwin was a team. little banged up last year, too, I think. Yeah, he he, de- he definitely he definitely got nicked up, and I still think he has a high ceiling. I love him as a player, oh, yeah. but he'll I'll be around. He's the, strong. He's yeah. he looks strong. I, I've always liked Chris Godwin. I scouted him before, like in the two score sheet leagues I was in. I grabbed him like after the drafts, and I grabbed him like for a bargain every time. It was like I knew about him because I'd watched him at Penn State a little bit, and I was sold on him after that Rose Bowl where he scored like two touchdowns and had over two hundred yards receiving. I was like, this guy's for real. It's really nice when you get those players really early before anybody else finds out about them and stack right. them, you yeah, know, know. Lay on your roster. And then, you know, two seasons later, somebody's, you know, scrounging the waiver wire after they break out and have that huge game. Like, I've never heard of this guy. He's bound to be a free agent. And then they look at your team a lot. No, man, right. already, already snapped up. Right. Already yeah. And you know, up. if you playing in this league, that's not going to happen to guys who play in this league for long because you're not going to miss anybody anymore. Right. Yeah. The, the talent pool is such that, you know, there's nobody out there. You might get a few James Robinson slip through last year. You know, once again, New Mexico, kudos to those guys. You know, he was way back on the death chart and oh, injuries yeah. and illness and cuts. Undrafted free agents, man. We're uncovering them now. Yeah, so there's there's going to be a few of those out there. But like you say, those are going to be really, really slim. I don't know how far you're on the Lawrence video because we're not synced up time-wise on that. But uh, I think he's going to be a star. I think he's going to be a star. It was a big decision for me. I had to pass on Najee Harris or Kyle Pitts, you know, in conjunction with Lamar Jackson to get that. You're looking at uh, Williams, which I picked up on the defensive line with my first transfer pick, which I, I think is going to be a star if he can get that foot healthy. I think he will. He's got plenty of time. He's a big guy. Even if he doesn't, I can I can redshirt him. And I think right. that's going to be a bargain in a few years. He was on the verge of breaking out, and he's a new defensive scheme. But passing on, you know, Chase was tough, but I couldn't really do that because of restrictions there. But still, you're looking at Pitts and Harris. Harris, we'll probably talk about again later on, It was always my favorite running back out of the group. And then towards the end of the draft, he oh, really yeah, passed some of the – yeah, some of those other guys. I mean, he was just physical with the football. Yeah, I knew well about Najee football. Harris about three years ago. I was already scouting him when we were in score sheet. I was like, man, down the line, I might have a chance to get him. And, I, I you know, I always try to scout ahead. That's why I started this league, I guess, because – I kind of got bored with just everybody. Okay, so you go into a normal fantasy draft, and everybody just basically drafts on what they did last year. Not a lot of creativity. Not always, but it seems that way, that everybody just looks at last year's stats, and that's really stupid because they never repeat. You know, I did a study um, a couple years ago where I found that the top five players at each position, there was a major turnover every year. There might be a couple guys that would stick. But generally, those top five lists will turn over every for year. Sure. I'm just baseball for whatever is, reason. Yeah, baseball is a little bit different. It's such a long season that yeah. you can pretty much bank on, you know, you know Mike Trout or Anthony Rizzo or you know Degrom or or some of those guys. You know, those guys are gonna be phenomenal. If they have one or two bad games, it's not the end of the world. They'll, they'll bring it back together. But football, there really is, like you say, a lot of fluctuation, even among the talented individuals. But you get the, ad, the injuries, too. Yeah. I mean, who didn't draft, uh, what's his name, McCaffrey, <laughs> first right. or second, and then he didn't even play all year, you know, because injuries, you got to remember the injury factor. And uh, people just don't think that way, and it's something to think about, you know. Uh, I wanted to uh, move on real quick to uh, your second pick there, Michael Carter. So what made you yeah. want to take Michael Carter at that spot? Well, I have him as the number four running back overall. So I, I was hollering anyway. For me – he reminds me of an athlete who is really electric with the ball, can catch, can run, can make some moves. If he was just a little bit bigger physically and could hold up a little bit more in between the tackles, I think it would be a three-down back that would dominate the league. Okay. But I I don't think that physicality is there with him right now. I don't think it's fair to really expect him to, to grow and put well, on he's, enough. He's 200 yeah. pounds. I'm, I'm get, I have him down here at 200 pounds, and for a 5'8 guy, that's, that's pretty thick. Yeah, he's just – like another 15 pounds, another 15 pounds, another couple inches, I, I feel a little bit better about him. And he could very well turn into that 1A, you know, by having at least a really solid 1B with a chance of getting some big blow-up games. I think he could have a blow-up season by times. So I don't know if he'll ever put it all together to be the guy consistent, you know, three-down starter. But he's also on a team, as the Jets are a new offense, a new coach, 
has a chance to make some impressions, turn some heads, and and be a focal point. And I really needed to run it back at that position. Like I talked about earlier, I passed on Harris to go with Lawrence, and that was a big decision. I think it's going to pay off, maybe not this year, but the next three. But I had to have a running back there. Otherwise, I'm only Chubb. And that gets dicey. Bias, injuries like you spoke about before. I didn't want to go into the third round of the draft and not fill that spot. Right. Yeah, Chubb, he, he definitely was a star last year. and we had, But those injuries do come up. So you never know. Yeah. But, yeah, Michael Carter, he looks pretty good. He shared carries over there with, uh, who was it? He shared carries with Javante Williams in North Carolina. So, you know, he's not, he hasn't yeah. been overused. And that's a good thing. You know, you want these guys that are coming in with little miles on them because running backs, you know, they have pretty short careers when it comes down to it. Uh, I think they're yeah. pretty good for about anywhere from four to seven years. And then it's almost over for most of them. Yeah, if you look at his production at college, he was actually he he did he did good battle with Javante Williams. So it wasn't like you know he was definitely being outclassed. He was oh he no, was being they were a great one two punch. Yeah, he was right there production wise, and so yeah, he could end up being a steal at that spot, and that's kind of what I'm hoping for that he turns into one of these players that's more valuable than he was pro- projected to be. Yeah, and if yeah, that's the for case. Sure. I feel really good about it. You know, I got to build that offense back up. I didn't take any skill players very high last year. The restriction rule was a little bit different. The line right, was, uh, yeah, definitely. State. The defensive distri- restrictions don't make a lot of sense to me anymore. I, I, I the offense does uh, because I don't want people to be able to hoard all the star players. It takes the fun out of it for everybody else. Right. And, you know, once a guy's already stacked, it's kind of nice to give somebody else a shot at, at a star player. Otherwise, you know, the guys lower on the totem pole wouldn't have any fun, I think. But, uh, you know, the, Absolutely. the pick I liked was the third round, the Rondell Moore. Well, that, that guy's just electric with the ball. He's, he can score from anywhere on the field. He's he's a little slot of frame, but he's super fast, and he's going to be a dynamic playmaker. He gets to play with Murray in that offense. And they have him penciled in, you know, as a as a receiver who might not get that many looks early on. But I think A.J. Green is done. I oh, really yeah. do. Like, I mean, and then he becomes the third receiver. Once AJ Green is done, he becomes the third receiver in that offense. Kirk, I'm kind of back and forth on. He was a big breakout candidate a couple of seasons in a row. Hasn't happened yet. He hasn't played horrible by any means, and he's going to be valid in the offense. I forget which team it is that, that has him right now, but Moore could be a superstar. I mean, yeah, I think. He, he's not tall. I got him down here as about 5'9. And for a wide receiver, I always look at the uh, my prototype is Torrey Holt, six foot, about you know one ninety. Right. Uh, yeah, so he's a bit smaller than that. But I mean, just watching him on the film here, I have him on film, and yeah, he, he looks pretty fast. He's got good hands. I mean, he, he's going. Where's Rondell? He's going to the Cardinals. Okay, he's got a good quarterback throwing to him. Yeah, for sure. I mean, he's he's just so fast. He he creates separation. He's not big. But he creates separation. He's like I said, he's just excellent with the ball in the hands, so elusive. And he's he's ready to contribute. He's he's not right. somebody that takes a long time to develop. That you, you know, in this league, if somebody takes you know, three seasons to develop, even if you redshirt them, they're still only there for a little while. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and for for me, he's he's that really fast, dangerous slot receiver in a good offense that creates separation. And if he gets peppered with some volume, he's gonna break off some big games and he, he could he could be a, a league winner. He's one of those guys that may not be, you know, catching twelve balls for 150 yards every week, but he could be one of those guys that catches you know seven balls for 185 yards and or, three touchdowns yeah. one he, week. You and don't like, even yeah. need you. All you need is three catches for 120 and a touchdown. You got a big game. Yeah, and he's coming up behind AJ Brown and Gabriel Davis. You know, and, <laughs> and uh, who else have I got over there? Calvin Ridley and a few of those other guys. That are that are probably going to draw the majority of starts. So if he can play, if he can play well and make a pop start here and there along the way, you know, I might even look at red shirting him initially. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want right. to bench him for too long because I think he's going to be dangerous. Right. But I, I have some flexibility there. So yeah, that first year is really tough with some of these guys because you don't know if it's going to be a developmental year. It's going to be kind of underwhelming. And if you have some veterans already able to put up numbers for you, then it is a good idea to just. Let it go. Even if he does have 400, 500 yards catching, you really don't need it. And then you could get him for those better years, the prime years. The only risk you take really is that he gets hurt maybe in, in year three. Yeah, you can't keep keeping him. I mean, you can only keep him to the fifth year. So, yeah, if all of a sudden 
he gets hurt the third season, you're like, ah, oh, damn, I could have had that red shirt season. But that's just one of the things, you know, it happens. It's life. You know, that's that's part of this league. It's supposed to be challenging in that way. You know, I want hard decisions, you know. I think that's fun. It's fun. Your timing was good on that uh, when you were saying he's elusive because he was just making a play where he was doing just what you were saying. Nice. Yeah, it was yeah. good timing. <laughs> I think he's a fantastic athlete. And just because of my receiving depth, I think it's going to be a lot, lot college where I may have a little bit more flexibility with, with this kid early on. You know, if he's he's got four stars in front of him, I could easily redshirt him. I got another young kid we'll go see in a minute who I really like who might get some spot starts along the way. And if I can maybe redshirt him, play him the final four games, he still gets to make the playoffs if I'm lucky enough to be in that bracket. You know, and oh yeah, you and make some be. plays for me in 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 the in the end where where it counts. And so, you know, you never know what might happen injuries or or maybe I just get so high on the guy I play regardless. Yeah, you know, but yeah, I, I I really like the. I really like that pick. He, he would have, he would have been in the in that bracket as long as he was available. I knew he was one of the guys that that I wanted. He may he may not, uh, he may not achieve the level of play that I think he's capable of. But I'm really excited that I had a chance to select him there in the third round. Well, it's a team game, you know. I mean, that's why I, you know best ball is great because you never know who's going to step up, and you don't have to make those tough decisions and sit there and watch somebody that you didn't start go off it's really disappointing and i think in real football it's like this you know it's like the hot hand yeah. will start getting the ball in the game everybody's out there you know they got plays drawn up for several guys and not all of them are working one guy just may not he's his matchup isn't working out so another guy steps up it's it, it, so that's why i like best ball you don't miss out on anything and i for think sure. that's Anybody. the way it is in real life you know Anybody who watched the Colts last year will attest to that with the running back situation. Yeah. Fantasy owners pull their hair out. Yeah, Three the Rams, the same Super thing. Start. Yeah, for sure. Rams, same thing. Especially some teams with wide receivers, even as it's spotty who they go to. You know, right. I'm watching. Uh, I, I moved on to Eskridge right now, who you were talking about a minute ago. You were mentioning uh, Eskridge. And he went to the Seahawks. The Seahawks did pretty well this year as far as like. After the draft, they even picked up another guy. Uh, they brought in a lot of wide receivers. It makes me wonder if there's going to be a change of the guard there. Yeah, I don't know how how long they're committed to lock it. I think Metcalf is probably eventually going to be their, their number one target. But like you say, I think they may move on from lock it eventually at some point. I don't know if it's going to be salary cap or, or just they lock some of the young players better. They probably but want to that, save money. Yeah, that, that's, that's kind of my feeling. And Eskridge is one of those guys who can start right away. He's going to be a wide receiver three for those guys with Russell Wilson. Got a star quarterback throwing in the football. And he's another one of those guys that's just so dangerous after he catches the ball. And he's going to stretch the defense yeah. vertically with his speed. He's so, he's a deep right. threat. He's another and one so of these he, guys that's about 5'9". He, he's a little bit thicker than Moore. But, yeah, he's like a running back wide slash wide receiver. You get him the ball on a short play out of the slot and let him do his thing. And that's become a big part of the NFL. Yeah, he, he reminds me of T.Y. Hilton. If, if you're if you're looking for a player comparison early in his career, just you know, could be a potential volume receiver underneath. Just you know, taking those yep. taking those targets underneath, looking to break those big plays. And you already have Metcalf stretching the field. And Seattle's going to be good for some years to come. I don't think Russell Wilson is going anywhere. I know there was a little bit of of a fluff there for a while, and it seemed like he might be on the market. But that's kind of calmed down nah, a little bit. He ain't going anywhere. Yeah, then, yeah. He come back the other day and said he didn't request the trade yeah, and all that. So. That's just drama. I swear they they do this just for fun sometimes. I think the media plays a big role in overhyping some of this stuff. Yeah, the the only one I'm really concerned about is is Aaron Rodgers. I just see that as a potential to really be, like I said on the chat the other day, a situation where you've got two two teams playing a serious game of chicken and it could really just blow up for everybody. Aaron Rodgers missed the first part of the season. You know, Packers not do very well. I know they've got love out there, and I think they love getting in the ball with a little play on words there during, during all these, you know, mini camps and OTAs and right. all these things. They don't mind a bit that Rodgers is not there, but I think they definitely need him if they're going to be successful for the season. I don't think love can step in. Now, you know, love, and, I'm not convinced yet. I mean, maybe I need to look at the film again, but, I mean, the fact that he was Utah State um, – wasn't that where he went, Utah State? Yeah, I think that's right. You know, I'm, to, I'm, I'm just not convinced that. that he's he's even you know going to be a good NFL quarterback at all. Like he could hold down a job. 
they'd be fools to let Aaron Rodgers go. Now, of course, Aaron Rodgers is probably going to um, start hosting Jeopardy or something, right? Yeah, for sure. He's, he's, he's got tons of stuff he wants to do. So yeah, he's, not he's got his, his next stage already. And he's he doesn't have more than a year or two left. I don't think he's going to go the way of Tom Brady. I think he's ready to leave the NFL. Yeah, he signed through 2023 with the Seahawks, and that's a long time. So that's probably his career. Oh, like you're talking you about Rodgers or are you talking about uh, Russell? Rodgers. Rogers, oh, yeah, you Rogers, said the Seahawks. Son. Yeah, that's all right. I'm sorry, Seahawks. My bad. I'm <laughs> no, still, I still right. got uh, Russell Wilson and <laughs> Eskridge on the brain. Over so he signed through 2023, play. huh? That's Well, that's all right. Yeah. But, I mean, God, that's – okay, that's only that's two more years. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. And they just restructured Tanyan's deal the other day. The Packers, I'll get that right this time. The Packers just you're restructured fine. Tanyan. I just wasn't oh. sure if you were talking about Russell Wilson. Oh, no, yeah, you're good, but uh, – they just restructured Tanyan's deal, so they're making every effort to make sure that he's part of the roster, other than drafting the right players, I guess you might say. But yeah, I think they, yeah. I think they really want him there. They do, but, um, and he's a fan favorite. I mean, who doesn't like Aaron Rodgers? You know, he's got, he's got the looks, right. he's got the personality. Um, he's, you know, he, and he's a good player. He can take off and run with the ball at any time. I, I just don't know if Jordan loves. They're definitely not going to be able to succeed right away with Jordan Love, I don't think. I think that they have to keep an experienced quarterback there while they have a running game, while they, you know, while they have what they have. Because, I mean, you know, Packers in the day, they used to be a pretty bad team at times. They've gone through some some bad times. Yeah, it's so easy to forget for all the guys who've just grown up watching Favre and Rodgers. Right. It wasn't always <laughs> like that. Yeah. That's right. They were a joke for a long time. Yeah, this. Yeah, uh, I, I can't even remember. They had uh, Majowski and yeah, yeah, Mikowski, that guys. guy. Yeah, and they had. Yeah. Uh, oh man, now you got me thinking. Sterling Sharp. I mean, I guess that was a little bit later. So they were good by then. But yeah, we're talking like the eight late eighties and into the nineties. That was an ugly, yeah. ugly program out there. <laughs> they got things turned around, but uh, you know, it took some good quarterback play. I'm sure that's not what they what they want to lose. You know, for sure. Yeah. So, you know, you, you, you went a lot with offense. I, I see that. You uh, definitely liked your wide receivers in this draft, but you did finally turn to defense, and you got a good one here in Andre Cisco, I think. Yeah, he's he's a he's a ball hawk. You know, he's going to make some plays on the ball, and he can, he can make some plays on a run back as well. He can hit. He has his limitations in coverage like a lot of young DBs do. I don't know if he's going to you know be able to hold up in one-on-one coverage or like that as, as well as you might like. But he's going to be a dynamic playmaker and get the interception. That's big points in this league. You know, people taking the ball away. He can make some hard hits. He's going to get his tackles. He's going to start, I think, right away down there in Jacksonville. So Yeah, the Jaguars had it. By the way, they had a great draft. They got so many players. I mean, there was there were certain teams I thought really got some steals. The Steelers were one of them. And yeah, uh, Jacksonville had an excellent draft. And there was one other team. I, I It might come back to me. I think somebody else scored pretty well in this draft. But, uh, yeah, Jack, uh, Jacksonville and, and Pittsburgh. I don't know how Pittsburgh landed Najee Harris. That was just nuts. Yeah, it's just the league is not rewarding running back play right now. I, I don't I don't know what's up with that. I think they, they can get the one way from I see anywhere, it, but yeah. they must figure they just need a guy. They just need to work on their line, and anybody can run behind it apparently. Because yeah, these running backs don't go very high. Yeah, they they really don't. You know, Zeke was the exception a few years ago. He was the last running back I can remember that went really right. really early in the draft. Yep. But this almost just. Cisco kid, I like him. He reminds me a little bit of Eddie Jackson out there in Chicago. Just a big play safety who can hit hard. Yep. And well, yeah, he's big enough. Like he's six foot two oh nine is what I got him down as. So you know he can play in the box. He can be a part of the running game, and that's how you score points in fantasy. Was with the tackles. And yeah, if he's got a nose for the ball. Right. Yeah, he's and he's willing to tackle. He's he's not he's not going to shy away. He I would hope downhill. so. As a safety, you got to be. Yeah, yeah, he plays downhill, and he's got. He's got that physical, physical height and, and size, and, and and all those traits you look for. Lots of good. Yeah, he's prototypical. So I mean, always. the the uh, the resources I have had him down as the number one safety. I think he's got tremendous upside. I think he, I had him down as the number two behind uh, Richie Grant. I think okay. who I drafted and yeah. uh, for Alabama, maybe a, a few picks before that. You know, yeah, I really Richie liked him. Grant. I see him small, here. small school UCF guy, but um, I really like him. I think I think Grant's gonna be really good. I'm sure we'll talk about him as as time goes by. Right. But, yeah, I just like these 
these safeties who are willing to hit and tackle and are willing to make plays on the ball. You know, you need you need guys in this league who are gonna who are gonna tackle and who have the ability to make a big play. And there he was making a pick right there, as you said it. <laughs> so there's another one, nice one right there. You led that. Yeah, he yeah. looks like a guy. I think I'd read that he got a lot of interceptions in college. He he really fell down the draft. He would have been drafted much higher, but he did have that injury. He had the injury, con- and that that knocked him down a couple rounds. So, you know, I, I think Jackson won well, a couple rounds. Well, a couple rounds for for me probably in, in my league. You know, Jacksonville went pretty early on him, but uh, I think he would have been taken even earlier in the NFL draft if he hadn't had that injury that cost him some playing time. Yeah, and so I see it. Yeah, lower body he had injury. That, yeah, he had that short season there, and. You know, just like everybody else, sometimes teams tend to forget or are a little shy. You know, how's this guy going to come back? But well, injuries are be- a pretty big deal. Yeah, you you know, if a guy's banged up, I mean, that's what cost. Uh, oh, who was it? There was that linebacker, Dylan Moses. He, he didn't even get drafted. Jacksonville got him as an as an undrafted free agent. He is like a super stud at one point, and now he didn't even get drafted. It, that shows you people are afraid of the injury. Right, so so I think I think he's an, an elite talent who who fell a little bit because of injury. We'll see how that plays out. Hopefully, he comes back 100 percent healthy. I, I think he looks good right now, and if he, if he stays healthy, then he will be somebody that can really be a lot of upside at a round five pick. After, after those first four rounds, you're really looking for upside. You're kind of mining the last last little bit of talent. I felt really good about all my pack picks. I had all my picks for App State ranked in the top 50 on the respective side of the ball. Nice. So, you know, I feel I feel good about that. I, I like that. And Cisco, he was he was definitely one of those guys who I think I, I got a value on. Yeah, for sure. No, the round you got him, I, I liked it a lot. I mean, like I say, I have him down as the number one safety prospect. So that, that's a darn good pickup. I'm looking now at your next guy, the linebacker, Browning. You know what I like about this pick is that De- I think what Denver has um, – I can't remember his name, the linebacker that's been there forever. But isn't he retired? Josie? Who's Josie, that maybe? Is it Josie or – No, there's another – there's a, no. a linebacker that's been there for years. He's really good. Uh, what was his name now? Darn it. But anyways, I they think got, he's retiring. They got Chubb. Is Chubb out there now? Denver? Yeah, he's the young one, but there's an older guy. Yeah. There's an older guy. Yeah. He's been there for years. Um, darn it. Shows my sports it's, knowledge. Let me let me let me scroll down. I got the rosters here. Nice. I'll, yeah, I'll I'm trying to off. stay on the videos instead of flipping around and driving everybody crazy. I wanted them to see the highlights and yeah, your take sure. on some, the players. I'm watching Browning right now, but I think you know there's going to be some openings in Denver. They got Von Miller. Von Miller's he's, the guy. That's the guy that's been good for them for years, and I think he's he's up there in age, and I think he's retiring. Or maybe yeah, I mean, if he's not, he's definitely stepping back in the rotation. So there's openings there, and Denver's always got a pretty good defense, I think. So I mean, you know, sometimes yeah. just teams. You just go with certain teams. You know, they're going to turn a guy into something. It seems like. Yeah, I really feel like he's he's got a chance. Or if he starts on the inside or the outside, may affect his scoring a little bit. You know, fantasy's a little bit quirky sometimes, and how 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 it rewards players, even the best of systems. You know, it's it's you know how does. Which position does he play may impact his uh, his scoring opportunity a little bit. So, or if he plays inside or outside, may make a little bit of difference in how much he scores. But um, I really like him. I think he's got some rushing potential. He can he can rush the passer. You know, he's yeah. Browning, he's, I got him. Let's see here. Browning, he's the fifth best prospect in in my resources and six three two forty one. That's a pretty good size for a linebacker. He's a big yeah. guy. He's just explosive and fast. He's he's a fast guy. He's got a good skill set, right. and he can play, you know, inside or outside. He's gonna, he's gonna, I think he's gonna make that rotation one way or another. I'm just not sure. Yeah, how he, he played play middle him. linebacker in college, I think. So. Yeah, so like if if he was he's the middle linebacker, then he fits in there in that in that group somehow. Or if it's Johnson or Jewel, one that end up taking a step back eventually, he's gonna he's gonna be a point scorer in the league. And if he's playing outside. For Vaughn Miller, while he's hurt or banged up or a situational rusher, has a chance to make some big plays there. And yeah. I really need another linebacker. I lost T.J. White in the, the graduation. Right. And I like I like my line, my linebackers. I picked up first and second round last year in Queen and, and Simmons. But Simmons is a guy I'm a little bit concerned about 
<laughs> I, I mean, I like his skill set. He's a tremendous athlete. He was projected going very, very high. Oh, yeah. And he, he made some big plays. You saw towards the end of the season, he finally got more in the rotation. He made some big plays. He was he was scoring. But uh, if he's a guy that with, uh, was a Collins they drafted – that uh, was way up there in the linebacker. Yeah, I I, I don't know. One of, one, of, one of the guys took him very early. It was one of the guys I was high on, Merlin. Merlin took him in the – that Xavier Collins in the second round who went to Arizona. I had Collins as the number four linebacker prospect overall and behind Davis and Parsons and, and some of those guys. But, uh, yeah, so I don't know how much of a role Simmons will play. I hope it's a big one. I think he's talented. I think he's going to make the field, but we'll see how he scores in fantasy. Right. You know, right. Well, a, I think, a, you know, yeah, they got to, they definitely have to utilize him because he, he is, I mean, watching him at Clemson, it wasn't Clemson. Yeah, he was, was, Clemson. He was really good. I mean, just like I was really impressed with him last year, just watching the film. It's just playmaker, um, versatile. Yeah, you he know. made some picks. He made the who was it? He made the big interception against kind of end of the game while they were still in the playoff run late in the season. Yeah, um, I see I the play and my mind. He jumps up and grabs the ball along the sideline. I wish I could roll tape on that. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> well, you know, the, the you thing know, about yeah. DBs, the thing about players like that that make plays is that that's where they, they're, they're valuable in fantasy, I think, is because one week they're going to just win the game for you with some big play. It might be kind of mediocre in the tackle department for two weeks or something, but all of a sudden they'll have that game where they make that huge play, a strip sack or something, and those points will get you over. That He'll single-handedly win you the game like a good corner. Yeah, you're not going to get right. the week-in and week-out results, but all of a sudden, big pick six one week, and it makes all the difference in your game. Yeah, so I'm excited to have uh, have another linebacker in there that can make some big plays like that. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. He you know, got five players there now that I feel pretty comfortable in. I do like Davis Gaither, who come out of app, the, my alma mater kind of there. And so <laughs> I think he's going to take a step forward with the, with the Bengals this year. I think – Oh, Wilson yeah. will get some more time too. And so I'm pretty comfortable there. And Browning was a nice security pick there for me. It allowed me to feel really good about the linebacker core. I hate chasing linebackers. It's a it's a key part of your defensive scoring. Oh yeah. So you gotta have some linebackers. You so. do, you do. It's a high scoring position. And and you know what I noticed is DBs are kind of a dime a dozen. They all score right around two and a half to three points. And you don't really have to force the issue on DBs. You could always get quality there because everybody seems to have a good secondary. But linebacker, yeah. yeah, if you can get a real star at linebacker, you can get a guy that every week comes out and scores running back style numbers. And that's definitely going to be an advantage. And, yeah, you got For some sure. good ones here. I see Queen. I see, yeah, Simmons. He's got to turn around. Yeah, you you got some development to do with these guys. That, that You know, yeah. like Patrick Queen was pretty solid his first year, but – Everybody else, let's see, Kaiser White, what's his his numbers on the season? 30 points. Yeah, see, that's not quite going to get it done. Right, yeah, that's 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 a little bit weak. He was he was good for where I got him at, like, you know, the, the transfer draft or whatever, and come in and get some depth. The guy's going to be a rotational piece, so I know he's going to get some tackles. But like you say, I really needed a, I really needed a selection here. It wouldn't have hurt to went with another linebacker at some point in time. I just fell really in love with some of the skill position players, and we'll see if that comes back and – Right. And bots me, bots me in the end. Yeah, I know so, it's easy yeah. to do. You know, you want those offensive guys are fun to watch, and, and it's more exciting than defense for sure. So it's a trap you can fall into, like uh -huh. uh, drafting a guy like Tutu Atwell, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I really like Atwell. He reminds me a lot of John Brown. He's a little bit of a one-trick pony, but it's so elite. He's so so fast. He's yeah. super fast. Yeah, he's. I think he's going to be one of those guys like we talked about earlier. It doesn't make you know, necessarily the highlight reel every week, but he's going to have some of those big blow-up games and can win you some weeks. And at yeah, big round play. seven, you know, at round seven, yeah. where, where else are you going to find that lots of right. times? And they, they're and, going to run some jets with him too, I bet, jet sweeps and stuff. I'm seeing a play right now where he's doing it, and he's fast as hell. All right. He outran yeah, the whole is. defense right down the <laughs> sideline. They couldn't even get an angle on him. That's crazy. And he And he was starting laterally. At the line of scrimmage, he ran about 10 yards sideways before he took off upfield, and he still beat the entire defense. Yeah, I think he fell in, in our draft because he was a, maybe a little bit of a reach for the Rams. I, I think he'll be I think he'll be a really, really good well, player. Well, he's 5'8 and under 160 pounds, so you know everybody's going to doubt him just on that alone. I mean, that's not a bad size for a college or high school guy, 
But in the NFL, you're you're the littlest guy on the field. You're like smaller than the kicker. Yeah, <laughs> every, every time, every time, absolutely for sure. But so, he's yeah. well built. You can see he's athletic as hell. He's super fast. I, I agree with yeah, that. Just his, just his, just his frame, his natural frame. I don't know his natural frame will hold that much more weight. You know? Nah, probably I think... not. I mean, he 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 probably wouldn't want to have much more weight. I mean, his legs look a little skinny. But here's the deal. I think that you know, having played a little bit in my in my time, I didn't play a lot of high school, but I played in a lot of flag football leagues. And one right. thing I noticed, I'm about his size, and one thing I always had trouble with is if I had a big physical corner, guy six foot, right. you know, standing over me and just jamming me at the line, as fast as I was, I, I couldn't get over that kind of stuff. So I know they're going to have to find tricky ways of getting him out across the line of scrimmage. And I would imagine a lot of motion, which is going to end up, you know, using some of his energy before the snap. Right. But he looks he, like he, he's got a never-ending supply of it, so he could probably overcome that. Yeah, he, he might be limited to the slot uh, in, in that respect. I don't know if you're ever going to be able to get him on the outside, you know, where he's going to get jammed up a lot easier. Yeah. Get some more big they'll, they'll be motioning players. him. They'll be sending him lateral, at the, you know, send him in motion, and that way he's already got a head of speed up when the snap comes, and he can maybe use that to get by the guy who's trying to, t- to stop him at the line of scrimmage. If he gets free, though, it doesn't look like anybody could stop him. No, I had him ranked as the 15th wide receiver overall in my personal oh, rankings. Yeah, that's not so, yeah, that, that's not bad. You're thinking about each team is going to start three. You know, so that's, yeah. Well, I, think I mean, that's compared a... to the resources I got this year, I got, um, he was uh, down around 20, but that's close, you know, to where you're, where you were talking. Yeah, for sure. For sure. You know, you got those, a few spots here and there. That's going to depend on who's watching the tape and, and who's evaluating and, and things like that, so. I feel long. Uh, well, he's just slightly feel- smaller than Rondale Moore. Yeah, you know, he's got a chance. Uh, I thought the Rams, you know, being a Rams fan, I I figured they were probably going to just use him as a returner a lot. I think that was why they right. really liked him is because this guy could be an outstanding punt returner or a kick returner just because, you know, I mean, his speed, if he gets away. <laughs> For sure, yeah. He, he'd be down him out with the ball, and that's going to be a good way to get him the ball. But I don't know that you spend that kind of draft capital on somebody. Well, you never if know. If you don't envision. I, yeah. No, yeah. That's right, true. But... That's true. I mean, you don't – I mean, as a returner, you mean? But the thing is, yeah. is maybe that's all they figured they needed. Um, the Rams, when they were really good back in, you know, the late 90s, remember they had Azahir Akeem, and right. uh, then, then there was Tony Horn on that same team. And that was a big part of their Super Bowl run was the fact that they had they had several uh, return touchdowns that year, and it was yeah. a weapon. It, it was it was a strength for the Rams. Well, when I, when I look at the Rams roster this year, uh, they they could always do something. They could always do something. But Deshaun Jackson's the wide receiver three, and I'm not sure Deshaun Jackson. No, yeah, he's whole. Holds holds off two two out well all season long. You know, so there could be a chance that he's in that starting set. I know they do a lot of two tight end things there, and I, I took a tight end in the transfer draft that I like that was in the draft like the fourth or fifth round last year that they're that have gone to roster. I think can do some big things in Hopkins if they give him the opportunity. But you know, two two at well behind Deshaun Jackson. Cooper well, isn't Cuff, Deshaun pretty old anyways? I don't even know yeah, if Deshaun he can hold up. Like, yeah, I don't think Deshaun is going to hold off two 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 at well for. A, 17 games he's 34 yeah he's, no he's my, he's done i i don't even think about deshaun jackson that they got him i'm not even excited about it i think he's just a guy that they figured he's depth here and there he'll have a game for them but i don't think they expect him to play an entire season and be productive yeah. and deshaun jackson's 5 10 175 so atwell's oh, only wow. giving him a couple inches and, and 20 pounds so you know i mean i think that um uh, that could be a real value. Like I said, I'm looking for value in the last few rounds there. And I think that could be a real value pick. I was so happy that we, he was still available. I had him for Alabama, for the guys familiar with the mm-hmm. league. I'm also playing with those guys and, and trying to get that program turned back around and see if I can see if I can do anything. I think you can. Guys. I think it could be done. So. This will be an interesting uh, year because I think some of these teams – will turn around and it maybe it'd take a year or two because of the, you know, the developmental year, but I don't know. Like I yeah. drafted for Cal. I thought I did pretty good. I think that team will, sure. will be in the next two years. If of course the quarterback, you know, rises, if it's lock or somebody else, I think that team will actually be pretty competitive, right. but you know, I think it can be done is my point. 
And Wisconsin's kind of the reverse uh, <laughs> yeah. example of that. You know what I mean? Like, I know this league hasn't been up real long, you know, so it's only like no. the third year of the program, and this is Jason's first year with those guys. So I'm sure he's looking forward to, to getting those guys back up there towards the top. But they were the favorite when App snuck in from behind and beat them two years ago and for the championship. Right, yeah. That's right. And, you know, they were they they had steamrolled the whole league. Right. You know, and then at the end, the end they lost. They come back with a senior quarterback. Yeah. Who gets yeah you know, who who doesn't Sean. play up to expectations. Yeah. yeah. He graduates. Yep. They lost some other skill set players. They had a had a mediocre season. You know, yeah. part of it was bad luck. Part right. of it was bad luck. Right. The ups but, and downs. Yeah. You know, all of a sudden they're sitting there. At, what was it? Number six. Yeah. Drafting a drafting a rookie quarterback. That's yeah. right, yeah, and he went with several quarterbacks. I think he has four of them drafted in this one. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, like that's 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 intense. Yeah, like uh, not a quarterback to be had other than Trace. <laughs> kind of cr- well, you know, he's cornering the market. You know? yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, and, and you got to think with one of those guys, you're gonna get you're gonna get at least a starter yeah. from a good player. Should I do like I do like the first two selections best. And the, from that quarterback, I think uh, you know, Zach Wilson out there has a decent shot of being somebody good. Mac Jones, who's a real cerebral guy, mm-hmm. you never know what New England Bill Belichick can do with that. And I'm sure we'll talk about them more on the watch highlights. After that, uh, David Mills was the was like the prototypical looking quarterback. Has yeah. has a lot of skill sets, but no development. So right. that's a little bit concerning for me for this league because we don't have a lot of the developmental time. I know there's a chance he might get some some play out there right away just because of the quarterback situation. Mm-hmm. But, you know, even, even with a red shirt, like you say, is, is, is five years. So if, if you're counting on somebody not to play for three seasons, the best you're, the best you're going to get out of them is two. The first season you start is always going to be a learning experience, no matter how great you are. But, you know, so you could really, you could really end up with just a short window there, a small window. Well, the good thing but, is, is but, that uh, your draft position is determined by the end of the game, you know, the end of the season. So you bring these guys off a red shirt at the end, you can bring them in for four games at the end of the season. And all of a sudden you get hot at the end. And if you did slip into the championship bracket, you could be a seven and seven team and totally take it. For sure. Yeah. You got some, you got some opportunities there. As long as you can get in, into the, into the balls there. Right. In, you know, and I'm going to try this year, I'm going to try to schedule. I've already looked at the schedules, and there's only a couple games that are going to be problematic where I can't match up two teams' quarterback buys. Right. But I'm going to match. I'm going to get it to where you know there's not too many of those. There might only be a couple games where one team has a buy for his quarterback and the other team doesn't. But I really am going to try to match up. Like like say a team, two teams have a lot of buys. They coincidentally have a lot of buys a certain week. I'll try to match them up during that week. Yeah, that's a really good. That's a really good administrative decision from our commissioner there. Yeah. It's a, yeah. yeah. Well, I don't like those disappointing matchups. I don't want to see App State go up against Ohio State, and Ohio's out out of their quarterback that week. That's not fun. I want to see you guys yeah. do battle with a full roster. So I'm going to try to make that happen as much as I can. Sure. Yeah. Because, like you say, it's it's no fun when for either team when you're when you look at that that lineup for that week and, and one team is just down like five of their stars, the other team's fully loaded, and you're like, Yeah, I'm gonna enjoy the I'm gonna enjoy the football games this week, but I'm not even turning on the fan star app because I know how that, <laughs> I know yeah. How that Yeah, it's how not even fun then. Out. Right. Exactly. Yeah. We're gonna try to avoid that as much as possible. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll do what I can. I'm gonna be writing the For schedule sure. probably over the next um I might even start doing it this week. Uh just gonna basically take all the games from last year and then flip the home road matchup. And then what I'm going to do is look at the buys and then move the games, you know, the the weeks around. So it'll it'll be the identical schedule as last year as far as the matchups, but um, you know, the weeks will be different. I guess that doesn't right. even that what I just said doesn't even make any sense. It's kind of stupid that I even said that, but you know what I'm All getting right. at. I'm just going to try to match yeah. up the buys, and uh, yeah, it's it'll be interesting. I'm also going to be getting some. I'm going to look into getting some movie making software so I can edit these videos. And maybe so I can add like some music intros and and maybe help it stream a little quicker, you know. I mean, be just kind of flow, and yeah, I can e- and I can cut out ramblings like I'm doing right now, for example. <laughs> Easier for these guys to listen to. We don't we don't want anybody's ears bleeding out there. <laughs> no, and, and that's why the, the <laughs> highlights are, are a good yeah. part of this. I mean, I was wanting to cover New Mexico, but we're already running into almost an hour here. We're at about forty five minutes. 
And I didn't want to like go on and on and on because it's your day off and you probably want to go hit the course or, well, I don't know if it's raining, if you're going to be golfing this weekend, but yes, a little, a little rainy right now. I've, I've got 30 or 45 minutes to devote. 45 minutes will be fair. To well, the, to the, tra- the, the, the trout fishing will be good though. Right. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. All the, all the, uh, the insects and stuff will be washed out into the water there. It'll be a little bit dingy, a little color. They won't see you sneak up quite uh, as easy. Okay, be... yeah, yeah. I know those fish are smarter than you'd think. Yeah, for sure, yeah. Uh, trout fishing, I really love. It's my, one of my favorite things to do. But it's about done for me this time of year out here. Oh, is I it? I don't know what it's like. Yeah, out, out west. Maybe well, I don't, I don't fish anymore, but I grew up, like, we had country property, and I grew up, you know, around creeks and stuff. And I'd, I'd make a fish, fishing pole out of a, a twig. And just oh, tie yeah. some line to it, and then yeah, come up on the bank, you know, come out of the bushes and just dangle it in there, and you could catch them like oh, under the cauldrons. They, uh, you know, there's a road For passing sure. over. You could just drop your pole over a cauldron and catch one. Yeah, it's it's a it's a good time. I I enjoy it. I'm it's uh it's big for me in the, you know, especially in the spring and fall. Those are those are the prime times out here. In the, in the summer, it gets a little bit hot, and the water yeah, gets really I guess it would. really yeah. low and clear. Yeah, and the and the small stream fishing, like I like to do, is a little bit, uh, a little bit less productive. I'll, I'll say so, that. So what, what's the what's the entertainment then at this time of year? Then it's rainy and stuff. What do you just stay home, or are you out in well, out in the like, Carolinas? What do you what do you guys do? There's there's still golf and and hiking and things like that. I don't mind being outside in the outside, even if it's a little bit damp. I got a little pullover, you know, I'll take with me. I love being outside, so. I'll, I'll still go on hiking and see a lot of nature and see some waterfalls and you don't worry about cougars and stuff out there like uh wild you know, uh, saw, mountain lions and stuff i saw a bobcat last year oh I was that's nothing they won't hurt you a bobcat <laughs> He's like, don't not unless you try to pet him <laughs> yeah but uh, i mean a mountain lion yeah, will hunt you down for for lunch man right yeah we don't have really any of those out here unfortunately really? East, yeah the eastern cougar Okay, the, well, uh, we have wildlife. them out here in the West Coast, even in California, and they're not something to screw around with. Yeah, they. I think I think uh, that's primarily you know stops you know east of the Mississippi for the most part. Uh, okay. I've heard some rumors that there's one locally, but I haven't laid eyes on it. And you know, <laughs> <laughs> and it's not. <laughs> Raise your hands and scream. I was like, well, we're looking for a new owner for half in Alabama. Does anyone know anyone interested? Well, I know a guy here. He was riding his bike home, and he lives out East County, San Diego, where it's pretty deserty. You know, it's mountainous, too. And um, he was riding his bike home from work after hours, like in the dark, and he was actually being stalked by a mountain lion on several occasions to where it was even chasing him down the road one time. <laughs> I was in, wow. had my hair standing up, that story. <laughs> Yeah, I saw some interesting videos from out that portion of the country. My social media, I follow a lot of Yosemite and things like that because I'm just such a big nature lover. So I get some stuff like that. And I saw, like you say, some really intense uh, yeah. situations there with the wildlife out yep. there. They see you as prey out here. But yeah, you know, I'm right now I just kind of flipped over to the highlights from uh, New Mexico's first pick. What is it? Lamar uh, Chase? Jamar yeah, Chase. Jamar yeah. Chase, right. yeah. Yeah, and I was just kind of doing that as we were talking, you know, so that people had something interesting. I think we should cover this as well, but probably right. probably not today just because you're – I want to let you go, you know, and it's been a good hour. And I'm also hoping that we didn't just spend all this time and this video didn't record right or something. That always kind of nerves me, unnerves me a little bit, but – or just just as a teaser for for the next time we talk and get together, I love Jamar Chase. I, I expect such big things from him. Uh, if I hadn't had the restriction at receiver, and I think the restrictions are great, I enjoy that part of the game. I might have rode with Jackson one more year to draft this guy and and took my, <laughs> my chances with Spencer Rattler, even though I, I think Lawrence is a generational generational prospect. But uh, yeah, I've heard think, of this Rattler guy. I think I think New Mexico did very well for themselves here, and we'll talk about the rest of their draft. Yeah, you know, I really on, but... thought they were going to go running back, but um, apparently I was wrong. Jamar is that good? Yeah, like, well, I don't know, like, and then here's where I kind of probably differ from the the rest of the scouting. Uh, Etienne's a special player. He's got a lot of he's he's he can catch the ball. He's fast. He's elusive, but. I'm not sure that he's going to be that dynamite breakaway player. We'll see. I hope so because he's he's now paired up with, with Lawrence, and Lawrence's some Lawrence's success probably depends on Etienne. But uh, I, I had him a little bit further down the list. I probably had him at number three. I had Javon Javante Williams 
who went out there and um, the Michigan who got such a steal, got yeah. such a steal draft, yeah, drafting Jamonte Williams at, at, at the very last pick, you know. But that's another situation where I passed on a player that I really liked to take a quarterback because I have Sam Donald out there. I think he's going to do really well for Alabama, give them a chance to have some success. Mainly, yeah. he might do better there. I mean, because the Jets seem to just kill players. I don't know. Well, it's, yeah, it's a system thing, like and and a supporting cast thing. Like I watched Terry Bridgewater all season long. You saw the post on that. I, I'm not a Bridgewater fan. Tremendous person. Right. Yeah, good story. But no, he, but it's never worked out for him. He went to Minnesota, right? And it just never yeah. really materialized. And he he was just like he He's killed a good me backup. because of, yeah he killed me for as a starter because I owned uh, DJ Moore. And another league, and just so many big plays. That, you know what it must be on the field. It's probably yeah. that he just, you know, once he gets a few starts, all of a sudden now they start watching film on him and they figure out his weaknesses, and pretty soon, so he can surprise you for a game. He comes out of nowhere, I noticed, and plays yeah. well, and everybody thinks, oh, he can do it. But then all of a sudden he kind of fades. So maybe it's just a matter of the film. Yeah, I, I don't know how much those those knee injuries. You know, oh, took yeah. away from him. Injuries you know, will do it. Yeah, he was a he was a Pro Bowl quarterback right. in Minnesota. You know, right. for a single season, maybe. I so right. he he had some success, but uh, I don't I don't think he's the answer. Yeah, you know, in Denver, no. and I definitely didn't think he was the answer. No, Drew Locke is the answer. I think they just got to work. They just you know he didn't have all his receivers there last year either, and he had some huge yeah. games. I mean, I had him on my team, and you know, with the when I was calling him Colorado State, I think. Uh, he got had it. some big games for me, so I know he's got it in him, and I think he will be the starter there unless Aaron Rodgers goes there. If that doesn't okay. happen, I think he beats out Bridgewater. Maybe they use Bridgewater to kind of wake him up, you know, jolt him awake a little bit. But uh, I see Locke yeah. being the guy, at least for this year and maybe next. It seems like, yeah. you know, they could have drafted a quarterback. They had a chance to draft, draft one, and they didn't. So I think they like Locke. I think they do, too. I think, I think he's just as good a developmental prospect as, as yeah. there is in the game right now. As far I mean, as you only need so many needs points. Yeah, you can yeah. win with a mediocre guy. You don't. You could have Daniel Jones and still win in this league. It's just a matter of having the guys around him, you know, draft some great wide receivers, linebackers, running backs, you know. It doesn't have to be all the quarterback, you know. It's so funny you mentioned Daniel Jones. I thought I still had him as a breakout candidate last year, and yeah. I was absolutely – another guy I was just disappointed in – with, with play. He but did I still turn around. I like him. I watched some film on him, and I was pretty impressed, actually. I seem to remember thinking he he's, he looks real. He's very mobile. He's very mobile. like, And you don't necessarily think about that, but he had that really long touchdown run yeah, last it's year. It's important to be able to escape the pocket. That's like Rodgers, his game, he doesn't always run, but when he has to, he can do it. Yeah, for, for sure. There's Tom Brady's of the world are great, but that's not the way that the right. league is evolving. And so, honestly, I don't know the, how Brady's done it as well, like how he's considered the greatest quarterback of all time. Because I just don't, I just, I don't know. I'd like him. I know he can throw pretty, pretty accurately, but man, he just doesn't go out there and blow you away every play. It's like it definitely is like a, a strategy thing with Brady. I know with the the Patriots that short passes, short passes. All of a sudden, he goes for um, one of those big ones, and sure enough, hits it. It's because they've been setting it up. They're so good at doing that, I think. I don't know. I mean, maybe He's I'm wrong. He's a very cerebral guy. Very cerebral guy. Smart Apparently. guy. Apparently. But make, makes makes good decisions. Makes good decisions with the football. And, right. Um, and that's yeah. important. Yeah, making those pick six, you know, throwing those pick sixes, that ruins you. You know, that's pretty much why um, Philip Rivers, I think, has always been kind of overrated because, man, that guy throws more pick sixes than I want to see. And I've been in San yeah. Diego a lot of years. I watched a lot of Chargers, and I'm telling you, Philip Rivers is always throwing pick sixes. Yeah, I mean, and they had some really talented teams that never quite made it when he was oh, yeah. when he was quarterback. Yeah, they should have went past the Patriots that one year. They they were ahead, and they should have got to the Super Bowl. But you know, it's football. It's a bounce of the ball. You know. Yeah. How, how do you think Carson Wentz is going to do out there in Indianapolis? Yeah, I I don't know. You know, I just. I'm not really – I haven't looked at it that much. I've never really been super impressed with Carson Wentz. He, you know, I'm a little worried because I drafted Trey Lance, who went to the same school, right? Right. But, I, um, you know, I, 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 I'm not really thinking much of it. I should probably look I, at it. I think you did well with Lance. I really do. Uh, the, the key with Lance, I think, is he, he's going to be mobile. He's yeah. going to a good offense. Yeah. 
And yeah, good yeah. offense. I do like the coaching there in San Francisco. As much as I hate to say that, the uh, NFC West is full of good coaching. Yeah, I mean, and his skill set players are yeah, the scouting are not reports bad. were glowing on him. Now he was like a full like he's another another level below the guy you got, Trevor Lawrence, but. You know, the scouting reports were pretty high on Lance, so I went with that. I was like, I know he's North Dakota State, and it's against my best judgment to take a guy from a school like that. But then I looked at the fact that he only played there for one year, and that showed yeah. that after one year, the scouts were already ready to bring him into the NFL. So I went off of that, basically. Yeah, he's he's a talent, and you know, depending on what rankings you watch – they had him up as high as one. I saw him edge oh, uh, wow. Lawrence in, in a couple of rankings. You know, I don't. I don't know I about don't, that. But. I don't. I don't know about that myself. But you know, the guys are really high on maybe his ability to rush the ball and as well, well as Lawrence throw in games. It's taller by a couple inches, and you can really see that when he stands back behind the line of scrimmage. Lawrence has a lot of leverage, and he sees over that line pretty well. And so that's a, an advantage for him. And he's got a good, good, accurate arm. He did have a shoulder surgery in the off season, though, right? He did. He did. I think they're going to be easy with him. I hope he doesn't. I hope he doesn't miss too many games right. to start the season. Yeah, because right. you don't they'll want to redshirt him. You probably get well. You could redshirt him till the end, but then you might not make the championship bracket. Yeah, it'd be really tough to uh, to win even yeah. seven games. <laughs> yeah, you will have that next season. draft where you can grab anybody you want, though, and there could be a quarterback like Hodge for the Steelers, perhaps that you could that you could swipe as yeah. a backup. And you might be sure. smart to do that just because, you know, what if there's a problem with Lawrence and you don't know if uh, Roethlisberger is going to get hurt? You know, it seems yeah, to he's... happen. So, I mean, you might take huh? a chance and get somebody to back him up just so you stay in the fight. But, yeah, hopefully yeah. Lawrence doesn't, you know, he plays from day one, hopefully. Yeah, I think uh, I think he'll play as soon as, he, as soon as he's ready. And I think he'll start at least a dozen games. I really do. Like, yeah, Well, that'll be may... enough for you. Yeah, That'll be enough, yeah, and that will – and if he's, as long as he's healthy and playing at the end, I'm in the in the bracket, like you said. Then uh, some of the other younger players who I've got already that I'm expecting good things of can really hopefully make a nice run. Well, one last thing I wanted to mention: I I did a little study last night. It wasn't much of a study, but I just put the numbers together. I just analyzed the rounds, uh, offense to defensive players. So here's what I got: I got there was 13 to one offensive players in in the round one. In the second round, it was eight to six offense. Then it was nine to five in the third, and then the fourth round defense dominated. Defense was eleven to three, and then it went wow. back offense nine to five in the fifth round, seven to seven in the sixth, and ten to four offense in the seventh. I just wanted to throw that out there before I forgot about it. But I just I like to look at you know break down this draft. It, I I like these drafts that we do with these young players. It's it's all speculation and. There was a lot of yeah, who, undrafted free agents taken. It shows me that people are doing their homework. And they're, you know, they're going out there and, and putting their scouting on the line. What's your biggest steal? Who do you have ranked as the biggest steal of the draft? Of the entire maybe draft? A, 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 or even like in, just in the top three, two or three guys that you really thought, man, I don't understand how let this guy get away or how the league let him get away. And Well, you know, honestly, I would say Etienne was a pretty good grab. Right at number eight, like at the Tulane. Okay, yeah. yeah, I didn't expect we're, we're, him to go that far. I thought he was going to be gone in the first five picks. Yeah, we're going to differ a little bit on him, and, <laughs> okay. and you'll probably you'll probably beat me up later on and be like, yeah, "Oh, you so." But you, yeah, I, I think that's a fair spot for him. I might have even taken okay. Javante Williams there if I'd been drafting that spot. I'm not sure who who went with him at number eight, but uh, so they got a, they, they still got a very good player. I think Etienne's going to be a good player. I've said some. Uh, some positive things about him, hopefully, along the way. But uh, All right, okay, I got one for you. Number 24, San Diego State, uh, Kenneth Gainwell. I like that one. <laughs> oh, nice. I'm yeah. a little bit uh, biased on that. Yeah, uh, what do you like about Gainwell? I just like the film. He's fast. I like fast running backs. I like guys that, you know, when you see them outrun the defense right up the middle, and everybody, right. you know, they blow the corners away, the safety. Guys that have speed, I'm, I'm about that, because I think the NFL is a big play league. Right. But, you know, I don't think it was a super steal. I just thought I was pretty stoked to get him at that point. I didn't think that sure. you know, I would have a chance at a decent running back. I, I'm a big fan of Chuba Hubbard, too. I mean, these are other shows, of course, but right. I did like those two guys in particular, and I got them on both of my teams. But Oh, and that's another thing I want to mention before I let it go, because 
I, I like the idea of people running two teams, actually. I think it makes it a lot more fun in a league like this because we're not trading. You can't trade with anybody. So there's no right. way to really collude. And it really keeps your interest, you know? I mean, because you've always got a pick coming up around the corner. And one team might be struggling, but the other team might have a chance. It's kind of like having two fantasy teams. And in a league like this where, you know, it is so hard to get a good quarterback, I just like the idea of people running two teams. I, I think I might keep it that way indefinitely. Right. Well, definitely until, at least until you get some, get we get some more players for sure. You know? We have to have good guys too, really good owners, because I don't just want guys that are that's laying out there, just like laying down, sleeping on at the wheel. <laughs> exactly. You know? I mean, I like that yeah. guys like you are in there, Jerry's in there, um, your friend Phil, uh, you guys are yeah. all like, you know, really into it. I could tell you know what you're doing. And Hunter is coming along really well. Uh, he was having yeah. trouble with the website, but then I got to talking with him and, now he's he's totally good. I, I don't have to worry about Hunter at all. He he's got it all nice. down. Yeah. And he and he's strong. Yeah, you know, he seems to you know come up with with the draft picks, and I don't have to I don't have to get in touch with him anymore. And, and you know, be like, hey, your list doesn't have anybody on it. And uh, he's got a good team out there too in Georgia. Oh, yeah. Hunter does. Oh, um, for sure. Georgia's a contender, man. They're gonna they're yeah. gonna be tough. Yeah, like that's that's for almost forgotten, but. Except for a, a chance blow up game by Benny Snell, they might have been in the championship game. Uh, you know, it was a really close battle. Right. And Appalachian and those guys got together in the semifinal bowl game there. You know, yeah. So, yeah, that was fun. I love those bowl games. Yeah, yeah I really hard. enjoy this whole format. I've always wanted to run a league like this because score sheet, it was just the playoffs were kind of disappointing, you know, and it's like, there's so many games at the end of the season we could have played. You know, there should be a consolation bracket. You know, you should have stuff like that. Yeah, it really it helps keep everybody interested in it because, you know, you don't want to be, you know, full, start off, you know, three and six and be like, man, my season right. is done. That's you know, right. my quarterback was done. injured in the first four games and I did really well. Right. You know? <laughs> it isn't done. That's right. You got you yeah. have plenty of opportunity at three and six. And like you say, you got the consolation bracket. They do it in in college football. You know, even the lesser teams get a bowl game. Generally, you have to be a winning team in, in college. But, you know, a lot of teams get bowl games is my point. It should be a celebration. It's right around Christmas. You know, you got that one last game that kind of adds to your holiday spirit. I right. like that. Yeah, but, I yeah, I'm you. looking at George's roster right now. I'm just kind of – I know he had some weakness. It might be – I don't know his defense is looking. His line maybe his defensive line's a little iffy, but yeah, he's strong on offense. Uh, Georgia's gonna be tough. Yeah, they have those those running backs out there, and those those running backs are are tough. Oh, yeah, he's league. got a, yeah he's got a thick stall of running backs here, doesn't he? Yeah, it's it's just hard to hard to get a good quality running back. Well, and I heard Chris Carson's so, not going to be in Seattle this year. Really? Yeah, I heard wow. he's not gonna. They're not gonna re-sign him. That he's gonna be. I, they haven't been talking about it much in the news, but I think he's gonna he's, get signed away. Could be wrong, but that wow, would change yeah. things. That would open things back up for maybe a Rashad Penny to have a have a yeah big Penny. Season. And I understand they're not real high on Penny, and I know they have a couple other guys. That they might even have drafted somebody. I know that I have a a, a stake in their running game. I have DJ Dallas. I think there's a couple of dudes there that might. Be the new uh, guy. Travis Homer, I think, had a few yeah. They carries. have several guys that, and any one of them could step up, but that's hard to say. But yeah, anyways, I don't know. I I don't want to bore you to death anymore. I think that yeah, this was a pretty good uh, show. I think we went over quite a few things that we didn't intend to go over. For sure, yeah. I got a little bonus coverage there around. For the sure, yeah. <laughs> and I, you know, you know, I'd like to, like I said, I'm going to try to make this a little smoother in the future. I'm going to, I'm going to look into it this week. See about. Investing in some movie maker software. But, Absolutely, yeah. and let me let me know how this turns out. I'm trying this new oh, headphone sure. set be, here. Yeah, as long as nothing went wrong with the recording, I'm going to post it to the YouTube channel. And my thing is also, I'm hoping to get even people from outside of this league that might be interested in fantasy football. They might check our league out and get some insight on these young players. And maybe the YouTube sure. channel will start growing a little bit. I don't want to do anything with it, like money wise. I couldn't care less about money. Plus, you got to yeah. worry about copyrights once you start trying to monetize. I'm just more – I just like getting views. It kind of stokes you up, you know, when people are watching your stuff. Yeah, leave some good comments, hopefully, in the, in the yeah, comments Yeah, you section. never know on that – On that, uh, the trolls <laughs> yeah. love to ruin your day on YouTube. I, I often don't let them comment on anything because right. you'll get people just right. coming in there being nasty for no good reason. So 
Right. But you never know. Yeah, if people want to be adult, yeah, I totally have comments. For sure, for sure. Well, thanks so much for taking the time out. It was a pleasure. Yeah, pleasure man. talking to you. Yeah. Yeah, well, we'll talk again pretty soon, I'm sure, Mark. And uh, yeah, hopefully you got some energy left for uh, whatever else today, man. Enjoy your weekend. Yeah, for sure. I'm, I'm just getting fired up, buddy. I'm just right going to be full go. Off on a Saturday, I'm going to take full advantage here. <laughs> nice. All right. With All right, that, buddy. I guess I'll just uh, we'll just call it a day on this one. Yeah, take care. And the rest of the guys out there in the league, I'd, I'd love to hear your comments. We've, we've said a lot here. I know you guys probably disagree wholeheartedly maybe with us on some things, or maybe you really agree with us. Let us know Let us know what you thought. Give us some good comments back on the chat page or, or whatever, and, we'll, and let us know what your thoughts are. I'd love to hear some more feedback. No doubt. All right, man. All right, bud. I'll catch you later, buddy. All right, bye. Bye-bye.